All right, here is question number one from the 2016 exam. And it says a student investigates the enthalpy of solution for two alkali metal halides, lithium chloride and sodium chloride. In addition to the salts, the student has access to a calorimeter, a balance that goes to the tenth of a gram, and a thermometer to the tenth of a degree Celsius. <coughs> Sorry. You should again, yay, we did this. We put salts into a calorimeter and measured the enthalpies of solution. We did this with the hot pack, cold pack lab. And some salts, when we dissolved, were endothermic and some were exothermic. And when we did our Q equals MC delta T, one of the things was the M for the enthalpy for solution, we had to add how much salt we put in with how much water. So again, some fun things floating around in your head before you even begin. So now for part A, to measure the delta H of solution for lithium chloride, the student adds 100 grams of water, that was at 15 Celsius, puts it in the calorimeter, adds 10 grams of the lithium chloride, dissolves, and the maximum temperature reached is 35.6. So we see it went up, so this was an exothermic process. Calculate the magnitude of the heat. When they say magnitude, right there, we don't need to worry about the sign. So all we want to do is calculate Q, how much heat was absorbed by the solution during the dissolution process. And again, we see 4.18 for our heat capacity of the solution. Include units with our answer. So when we calculate Q, it's typically joules. So Q equals MC delta T. My M is 110 because I added the 100 grams of water plus the 10 grams of lithium chloride. And my delta T was 20.6 degrees Celsius. So I get 9,470 joules based on my three sig figs and the 20.6 delta T. Or if you wanted, 9.47 kilojoules. Now, part two, determine the value of the delta H of solution for the lithium chloride kilojoules per mole. So now I just have to take my 9.47 kilojoules and divide by moles of lithium chloride. I have 10 grams, so just turn that to mole. Also though, for my delta H, I'm gonna wanna include the negative sign now to show that it's exothermic. And so there you see, Lithium chloride is like 42.4 grams per mole. So I have 0.236 moles of lithium chloride. So it's negative 40.1 kilojoules per mole. All right, you don't need the RXN for reaction, but kilojoules per mole. And again, temperature went up, reflecting a negative delta H, exothermic process in the calorimeter. Now, to explain why the delta H for sodium chloride is different than lithium chloride. A student investigates some factors, finds that ionic radii and lattice enthalpy, the delta H associated with separating the solid crystal into gaseous ions, those both contribute to the process. And so here we see our ionic radii in PM, picometers, but you can see the sodium ion is larger than the lithium ion. Alrighty. Write the complete electron configuration for the sodium ion in the ground state. So sodium is atomic number 11, so typically it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, but it's the ion, so we get rid of the 3s1. And you can't use the shortened notation putting helium in brackets or whatnot, but not that you would want to, but it did say complete electron configuration. And now, part C, why is the sodium ion larger than the lithium ion? And so all you have to do is compare this. Here's the sodium ion, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. A lithium ion would simply be the 1s2 part because a lithium ion only has two electrons. So you could, should hopefully easily see the sodium ion has valence electrons on an energy level farther away from the nucleus, the second one, compared to the lithium ion, which only has electrons on the first. So occupied energy levels, the sodium ion has that electrons on a further away energy level. 
So now, which salt, lithium chloride or sodium chloride, has the greater lattice enthalpy? So who is held together tighter? This should immediately say, ding, 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 Coulomb's law. So again, there's our radii. And remember, the two things in Coulomb's law, the charges and the distance. Well, lithium chloride and sodium chloride are both plus one, minus one, so the charges are the same. It's all about the distance. Who's going to be held tighter together? The ones whose ions are closest together, the ion cores. So the ion centers for the lithium ion and the chloride ion are closer together than the sodium and chloride. And you can see that in the radii. The lithium ions are smaller. So there are greater Coulombic forces of attraction. And that's why lithium chloride would have the greater lattice enthalpy. It would take more energy to separate the lithium and chloride ions because they're closer together than sodium and chloride. All right, now we have a pretty picture of a lithium chloride crystal. And you need to identify the ions. So one, or, one is small and another's bigger. Our cations are always smaller. They lost electrons, they, so that those electrons are pulled in closer. Anions are bigger, plus, just in general, chloride has electrons in the third valence shell, so it, they're just bigger than lithium to begin with. So hopefully you would label the chloride ions being the larger circle and the lithium ions being the smaller. Now it says the lattice enthalpy of lithium chloride is positive. <laughs> Sorry, I had a sneeze. So this lattice enthalpy of lithium chloride is positive, indicating it takes energy to break the ions apart. Well, no duh, it should, because they're held together by Coulomb Coulombic forces of attraction. However, dissolving of lithium chloride in water is an exothermic process, so it's releasing heat. So why is that? So again, it takes energy to break the lithium and chloride ions apart, but ultimately heat is released once it gets dissolved into the solution. This is a little tricky, you know, kind of funnel, funnily worded, but identify all particle-particle interactions that contribute significantly to the dissolving process, the dissolution process, being exothermic. For each interaction, include the particles that interact and the specific type of intermolecular force between those particles. This is a tough one. But, you know, when you dissolve this lithium chloride crystal, it's the water molecules that are pulling them apart. So the negative parts of the water molecule interact with the positive lithium ions, and the positive parts of the water molecule interact with the chloride ions. So to me, that's what they're asking here. The lithium ions interact with the partially negative oxygens in our polar water molecules, chloride with the partially positive hydrogens. These are called ion-dipole interactions. Again, um, if you got 9 out of 10 points on this question, that would be super dope fantastic. This was a tricky point, but that's what's going on here. They were looking for the interactions between the water molecules and the ions in the crystal. And then we've mentioned them, but haven't really focused so much on these ion-dipole interactions, but that's indeed what they are. All right, I hope this helps, and I will see you soon.